Hey, I'm Jessica Kaminsky, teacher and educational consultant. I have to tell you, I am overwhelmed by the response of people who are starting using this book and have so many questions and want to know more information. And as a teacher who taught this, who was fortunate to be trained by Jan Richardson and some other great people, and also worked as an instructional coach in three different buildings, teaching teachers how to implement this, I want to share the information that I can because I saw it work with students. I'm even tutoring students now because it's so effective and it works and I'm still using this method because I believe in it. I saw students in my fourth grade class go from a level I to a level O within the school year using this and being really effective. And so I want to share anything that I can possibly share and help out. So please look into this preview of just a couple of things to help you get through this book and just know where to look so that you can get started. So what I've done is I've created a little cheat sheet that you'll find on my blog post. So if you're seeing this on YouTube, go over to my blog and you're going to see that I've got a cheat sheet that goes along with this. And I've taken the high points from my cheat sheet so that you can know what to find in this huge book. Whenever I do professional development with my teachers, this is typically the first thing we do. We go through the book and we use tabs or sticky notes and we post little notes everywhere where we can access it quickly because there's so much great information in this book. You saw in the video, my book had tons of tabs in it. So as I said, we're gonna go through this cheat sheet really quickly. You can access it on my blog, but here are the guided reading basics. It's based around the leveled system of Fontes and Pinnell reading levels but it is part of a balanced reading approach. A lot of times when people hear guided reading, they think you're just doing guided reading, but she is very sure to tell you that you're gonna do a whole class read aloud, you're gonna do independent practice. Guided reading is just a piece of it. And she has it broken into five different stages. You've got pre-A, emergent, early, transitional, and fluent. And there's a lesson plan for each of those types of readers. Now, I know if you're in a classroom that is an upper grade classroom, you may have a variety of these levels and I have to tell you, you can make it work. Um, I also think that it helps you to understand the reading development a little bit better. Whereas if you're in early grades, you typically have pre-A, emergent, early, and maybe some transitional. So you are gonna have multi-levels within your classroom, but that's kind of the beauty of this is meeting readers where they are. Let's talk about a pre-A reader. A pre-A reader is a reader who knows fewer than 40 upper and lowercase letters, and the focus of her lesson plan is to do name writing, letter formation, letters, sounds, and then book concepts, you know, how to open a book, what's on the page, where are the words on the page, reading, you know, left to right, that kind of thing. Um, she does utilize a letter tracing book that you can find more information about it. Um, in my cheat sheet, I mentioned that I actually use the letter tracing book and I use puffy paint on the letters to make it more tactile for some of my sensory students. And her letter formation is taught in a specific manner. She does them in an order. She has them build off each other. And if you wanna check on one of my older blog posts, which I'll link to it here, I have some formation cards with the directions, which is really helpful because they're up on the wall and you can remember when you're in your reading lesson to say like around like a C, um, that will help students to remember the proper letter formation so you can access that as well. After pre-A, you have your emergent readers. These are going to be students who are levels A through C, and they're going to be students who can write their first name, they can identify at least 40 upper and lowercase letters, and they know at least eight sounds. So you're not dealing with them knowing a lot of sounds, they're going to work on that within this emergent lesson plan. She has specific teaching strategies for this level that she's gonna list in her book. And you're gonna begin working on sight words and she has a great strategy to help teach new sight words that's very specific. And I also have a blog post with a video of that that you can see. You are also gonna begin a word study component where you're going to talk about spelling patterns and really work on those letter sounds. And she uses magnetic letters. She uses some great little word study tricks to help change different sounds within a word and help students pay attention to words as they read. And she does include a guided writing component on day two, which is gonna kind of tie all this together. That's one thing I really like about Jan's plan is she ties writing in. So you have the reading, you have the phonics, and then you have this writing piece. So you're getting all that together. And keep in mind that each of these lesson plans are designed to be done in 20 minutes. And if you watch her videos in her book, she tells you to go to her website and type in a keyword and you can watch her videos. She really does it in 20 minutes. I've seen her without timer. She's impressive. And as you get better at it, you will be doing the same thing as well. 
After emergent, we have our early readers, which are levels D through I. These are going to be students who are still working on decoding and sight words. So you're going to have specific sight words for these levels that she's got listed in her book. But the main goal is going to be self-monitoring for meaning and comprehension. So as they read, do they know that this doesn't make sense or are they still just, you know, keep going? She's also going to start having discussion prompts at this level because you're reading text that have more of a story, whereas in emergent reading, there's a lot of repetition, so there may not be as riveting of a story. Um, but in early, you're going to start having some more discussion, and she's also going to introduce analogy charts, which are going to help compare more complicated spelling patterns during her word work. Again, she's going to have guided reading. After early readers, you have transitional readers. These are going to be levels J through P. They have a strong sense of sight words and decoding, but they are working on fluency and comprehension. So these are your kids that can kind of sound out words, but maybe they sound choppy as they read or they don't use inflection. And so you're working on that and you're working on basic comprehension strategies. It's going to move to a three day lesson plan. It may not always take three days, but that's kind of how she's got it scheduled in there. Traditionally, students are going to move one level per grade level as a transitional reader, so that kind of just tells you where you're at in your grade level, whereas they might move a little bit quicker in those earlier readers. I put this in here that you may want to consider using a reading journal if you're moving to transitional readers because you are moving to a reading lesson plan that's going to take a few days, which means they might start reading on day one and continue reading on day two. And so a reading journal is kind of a nice place to put the information if they use sticky notes or if they do some kind of response while they're writing, you know, keywords, anything like that, because if you're using that book for multiple groups or you don't want it to get messed up, the reading journal is a great place to put it. And you also can keep your word study activities, um, word walls, any of those things in that journal as well. There is a new word study activity, make and break a big word, that she's got in there that's going to be really helpful for word study as well. And then finally, you have fluent readers. These are going to be your levels in through Z. Now notice there is an overlap from transitional, because it went through P, um, to fluent. And she makes a point to say that transitional students, so in and above, um, they should still be doing the transitional plan if they're still working on retelling, decoding, or fluency. So they don't move to the fluent lesson plan, even if they're P, but they're still struggling with those components, they would still be on a transitional plan. They don't move to a fluent plan until they can show that they're actually reading fluently. This is going to be a multi-day lesson plan, and you're reading longer text, and she does say to be sure to include a variety of text, poetry, articles, nonfiction, uh, be careful. This does not mean read a chapter book. She does state that in there, and I put that on the cheat sheet. You can read a chapter from a chapter book, but you would, this isn't the time to go through an entire chapter book together. She does have a specific strategy to teach vocabulary, which is beautiful, and it's done quickly. Um, I love that, so make sure you pay attention to that. And she does have guided reading. Do not skip this. I, I have found that when working with teachers, and I'll be honest myself, Sometimes we skip the writing part, and this is where you're teaching students how to respond to literature, which is always a standard, um, whether it's fiction or nonfiction. So you want to make sure that you're teaching this planning piece and the writing piece. At the end, she has some comprehension modules. These are designed to be used whole group first and then during guided reading if you're not working with fluent readers. So it might be something that you do whole group, and then you go and you try that strategy out in guided reading. And in each module, there's a little box that has a whole group lesson plan, and then there's suggested for guided reading. Note on that for the suggestion for guided reading, in italics underneath it, it'll say like four levels, J and higher. So just so you know, it's, it's kind of giving you that scaffold there. And then what's really cool about these modules is that each of the steps that are listed there are a progression of steps. So you might start at step one for this book, and then as you move into your next book, you go to step two. So it's really cool that she does that and you can build upon that. Or even if you're working on the same strategy across different groups, maybe one group is doing step one and another group is doing step four. So it's very cool how you're doing that. And don't forget about the great resources in the appendix. She has tons of word lists. She has the lesson plan templates, word walls, all that great stuff. You want to make sure that you have that tabbed and ready to go. So I tried to make this short and sweet so you could watch this very quickly and just get a good idea. 
Don't forget to check out the cheat sheet that goes with this because that's gonna give you more information. And really all it is, is like I said, when I sit down with teachers and I do a guided reading training, the first thing we do is get to know your book because this book's gonna be your best friend. And so we tab pages. And so my cheat sheet literally goes through what we just did, but more in depth. Um, I only picked a few things on here because I wanted this to be quick. So it goes in depth, it has the tabs with the page numbers for you to put them in there and hopefully you can do that. And then I'm working on signing up for a mini course where we can plan a lesson together. I think that's the hardest part about doing this is how do I take a book and make the lesson plan? How do I make these decisions? And so I wanna help you out. So if you're interested, please send me an email at this email, I'm gonna be setting up some and I would be love to work with you, that's what I do. Um, I work with teachers and so I'd love to do that. Or you can respond on the blog by leaving a comment with your email and I'd be happy to help you out. As I said before, I'm a teacher and a consultant. And one of the things that I am striving to do this year is to create a lot of online professional development, whether it be through courses or conducting online training. So that can be through webinars or Google Hangouts anything that we can establish. So please reach out to me if you'd like any help in any of the subject areas, because I was an elementary school teacher and I worked in all five areas. Um, I've been focusing a lot on math lately, but I'm still in the trenches in this doing reading, especially in kindergarten right now. So if I can help in any way, please email me, contact me, and let me know how I can help you. Thanks.